Store time lapses are something that I come back to every so often. They're really eye-catching and they're more straightforward to create than you might expect. In this video, I'll be covering my workflow, starting with raw photos in Lightroom Classic and ending with a video time lapse in Premiere Pro. And if you're interested in how to shoot the photos themselves, I'll be making a part two covering that. So first things first, we've got to get all of our photos in Lightroom. What I've done beforehand is gone through the photos and picked out which ones I'm going to use for my time lapse. That's going to be all these that are highlighted in red. The ones before are when I was dialing in exposure and framing. Most of these photos are a little bit underexposed from what I was going for. That's really common for taking night photos since the viewfinder is so bright, it can kind of trick you. It can kind of trick your eye into thinking that the photos are brighter than they actually are. So that, that is something to keep in mind. All right, so let's get to editing. We're gonna go into develop. Um, so the goal is we've got to edit all these photos to be as identical as possible. Otherwise we could risk getting some flicker or other unpleasant things that we don't want in our final time lapse. Yeah, so there's a few ways to do this, but the way I like to do it is pick one of the photos as a reference photo, and then we'll copy all the settings to the other ones. So I'm just gonna take this first photo here and use it as a reference photo and get started editing. I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit, probably more than I actually will, just to kind of see what I'm working with. Um, let me. Okay. And the reason I'm manually setting the white balance is because I made a mistake when shooting these and forgot to put it on manual white balance. So it's an automatic white balance. So as we go through these, you can see this one's 4,500. This one's also 4,500. But if we keep going down the line, this one's 4,450. This one's 4,600. So we've got variance in white balance. This is one of the big reasons to shoot raw because you can fix errors like this in post without any consequences. And also with these being a little less exposed and I wanted to give this a lot of room to fix that. So let's go back to our reference photo. Got the white balance set to custom. Let's see, I'm gonna enable clipping just so I can kind of see where I'm at. Here, I don't really care if I'm losing data here. There's not any detail there anyway. Okay, yeah, I'm just doing some basic adjustments. I'm not I'm not gonna be too picky about this. And if I really wanted to, I could come down and fine tune things even more. Okay, so I've just come down to the tone curve. I've kind of repositioned the values a little bit because everything's really shifted to one end of the histogram up here. So to get to individual control of the different regions. I've moved, moved the boundaries of the different regions so I can actually get some control. I'm gonna play with the shadows tint just a little bit in the ca camera calibration. I've just messed with the basic settings a little bit, brought the exposure up, increased the highlights and whites a bit, brought down the shadows and blacks a little bit. So basically just increasing exposure and increasing contrast and I've done a little bit in the tone curve as well to boost contrast just a little bit more. I've set the white balance, done some very minor color correction in the camera calibration settings. So there's our before, there's our after. One of the things you want to be really careful of when you're making time lapses is to only change settings that can be applied consistently to other photos. So that means that means you can't use any of the masking that uses AI, subject detection, anything that doesn't have a predictable deterministic outcome could give us unpredictable results photo to photo, and that can result in flicker in the ending time lapse, and it's just not going to look good. So stick to basic corrections. And another thing I'm going to do after I've got my exposure and contrast and color kind of how I want is I'm going to come down to detail and look at noise reduction and sharpening. And grab the mask and hit alt on the mask to see what it's affecting and let's see if we can get it to just show the stars okay yeah and what mask does is it allows us to apply the sharpening to just edges so hopefully we won't sharpen up all that noise too then when we apply sharpening it's really just to the stars and we're not seeing a huge boost in the, in the noise as well. So if I take that masking and turn it off, 
we'll see how much the sharpening accentuates all this noise. But then if we bring our masking back up really high, we'll see how it's just the stars and not really so much of the noise. And then with noise reduction, like on the long exposures, especially, absolutely want to reduce the color noise. And with regular noise reduction, I might do a little bit, but we've got to be careful because if we go too high, it's erasing stars, it looks kind of muddy, and it actually starts to look a lot like a night mode photo on an iPhone. And that's one of the reasons they look so weird. So I'm just going to apply a little bit. It does look like it ends up getting rid of a little bit of our stars, but that's okay with me. I'll take just a little bit of noise reduction and in exchange for losing a little bit of that star detail. But I think it still got plenty of stars, so you'll just have to make that call. Okay, so now that we have that editing done, we can apply it to all of our other photos. There is a decision that we have to make before we bring it into Premiere. Are we gonna take the whole photo in this case, 5472 by 3648. That's huge, 20 megapixels. 4K is about eight megapixels. That's gonna be pretty hard on your computer to run, and it's also an odd aspect ratio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop it down to a standard video aspect ratio, so I'm just ready to work with it and export it in Premiere. I've heard that Lightroom is also better at resizing still images than, than Premiere is. I don't know how much truth there is to that. I haven't looked into it that much. Okay, so I'm gonna crop it down to a video aspect ratio of 16 by nine. Okay, I want most of that Milky Way cloud. I want a little bit of this ridge here, so I'm gonna crop it like that. All right, so now it's time to apply it to all the other photos. I'm gonna right click on a reference photo, go to develop settings, copy settings. This is gonna come up just to be safe. I've recently started just selecting the ones that I need. I'm gonna copy that. Okay, then I'm gonna click on the second photo in our series here. Go down to the last photo in our series, hold shift, click, and now we have all our photos, now we have all our photos except the first one selected that are gonna be part of the time-lapse. And I'm gonna right click on that selection, develop settings, paste settings. This is gonna take a second to actually apply, there we go. And it'll take even longer for the settings to actually propagate and show up in the previews. Now it's time to export all the photos. Click on the first one that we're gonna include Going to go all the way down to the end, hold shift, click the last one. Oh, it's holding caps lock. Okay, let's go back to the first one. Now that one's selected, hold shift. Okay, we've got all of our photos selected. Right click, export. When you're exporting it, you need to make sure that there is sequence. It's going to start with one. So every file is going to be Utah Night Sky 1, Utah Night Sky 2, Utah Night Sky 3. In file settings, I'm just gonna do JPEG. You could do a lossless format if you wanted to. You could also resize to 1080p at this point if you wanted to, to make it easier on your computer. We have it in a different folder. We have a sequence that we're generating. We're doing JPEG, full quality, resizing to 4K dimensions, 3840 by 2160. Okay, we should be good. Let's export. So now it's exporting all 84 of these photos. This is gonna take a minute. I'm gonna open up Premiere. Okay, so I'm creating a new project. I'm gonna skip import because I'm gonna do a different kind of import in a second. In our brand new empty Premiere project, I'm gonna go to file, import. Okay, so we've got our raw photos, the ones we imported. The key thing here is we wanna make sure image sequence is selected. We only need to select the first photo and make sure image sequence is selected. And we can open it up and it will turn it into a video for us. So if we preview that, we can see that it's already a time lapse. It makes our life really easy. So we could just drag it in, create a sequence, and there we are. Yeah, looks fine, but it's only two and a half seconds long about. It's going pretty fast. Now, if we wanna change the speed, I mean, you can come down here and do speed duration, but what I like to do instead is change the actual frame rate of the footage. 
So I'm going to come down to our original video file here, right click on it, go to modify, interpret footage, and it's doing 29.97, so basically 30 frames per second. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Let's try 24 frames per second, and then we get almost three and a half seconds instead of just under three seconds. I do that, I can stretch it out. I'm going to change my sequence settings, and I'm going to change this to 24 frames per second as well. Okay. So we've got that, and now we can see it's slower. And for the time lapse, you might want to go even slower than that. Let's go even slower. Sequence settings. Let's try 15 frames per second. An original time lapse file sequence that we imported, modify, interpret footage. I'm going to bring it down to 15 frames per second. Okay. And there we go. Mm. Forgot to stretch it out to the full length. Okay, so here's our full time lapse, 15 frames per second. You can see it's a little bit choppy, and that's because we're dropping frame light rate pretty low. But for time lapse, sometimes that's okay. You just have to decide what kind of look you're going for. I'm going to go ahead and export this. What I'm going to do with the video settings, I'm going to match source. We're going to export in 4K. I'm going to click maximum, nope, not render jet, maximum render quality. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to turn it to 50 megabits per second. That's about what you'd want for a high quality YouTube video export. Now, if you wanted to, you could totally reduce the size to 1080 to make it easier to upload and share. That's just up to you. Don't have any sound, so I'm turning audio off. I'm going to export that. Here's our video, 15 FPS. I'll probably put these up on screen instead of just screen recording. This one's gonna look considerably smoother. Yeah, it's pretty cool, we can see probably satellites and stuff going around here. It was super dark, one of the darkest skies I've ever seen. Looks like we've got a hot pixel there. We could fix that, but I'm not gonna bother right now. So that was pretty much my workflow for creating time lapses of the night sky. One thing I wanna mention is if you're experiencing a lot of flicker on export, it might just be due to a bug with Lightroom. I experienced that earlier looks like this. I spent hours trying to figure out what was actually wrong and came down to just restarting Lightroom. Just something to note, this is kind of a new format I'm trying out. A little bit more casual sharing photography workflows, tips and tricks. It would allow me to put out more content more often. So let me know what you think. If you want to see more of it or if you don't, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.